India Willoughby has very kindly called us, uh, who clearly has a qualification in this area. I know it wouldn't be a mastermind subject, India, but it's. Um, hmm. I think you'd probably do rather well if you did. Um, what do you look? This comes up way too often, as you and I have said many, many times. It it never did come up, but now it does. We can argue forever why it does. Um, what is it you've heard so far today that you, you think is worth adding a, a true trans voice into this debate? Yeah, hi, Ian. Uh, I'm just really disappointed in the amount of ignorance that's existing around this. And I understand why it is. It's because the public are swamped with negativity. You never actually hear from trans people. There are no trans presenters, columnists whatever in public life it's just non-stop bad news and demonization of trans people and i'm listening to your talkers today and it just breaks my heart it really does anyone out there who thinks that somebody's born trans and that's what it is we're biological we're like everybody else you're born trans it's not a choice it is like being gay in that sense you have no say um over the matter and we're not looking for a pat on the head or to be indulged and, oh, we'll play along and, you know, call you a name. This is who we are. We are women and we are men. And as the law stands currently in the UK, though you'd never believe it from the right wing press that um, pumps out this rubbish nonstop, a thousand articles a month, the law recognises that fact. And we are men and women recognized in law and we are legally allowed currently and we have been uh, allowed since the 1960s to use our preferred facilities I, I heard the guy earlier on talk about anorexia and i heard you pull him up but i was a little bit disappointed for the reason that you pulled him up ian you pulled him up because you said it's not the same anorexia is really serious and and life-threatening well let me tell you being trans is life-threatening gender dysphoria is a life-threatening condition but be, being a kid in a classroom india deciding you're going to call yourself non-binary and there's thousands of those examples and i think your words when you we spoke once on the program was what a load of old rubbish that is you might have changed your view on that i don't know but I think that was the comparison that he was making. Kids who, you know, they used to be a goth, now they're non-binary. Two years later, they're not non-binary. Well, no, That's a whole different journey to the one yeah. you've been on. Yeah, I, I, I think you're, you're putting words in his mouth. He wasn't meaning that at all. And I'm talking about the overall ignorance and some of the... the I, you know, I'll just be honest with you, Ian. It's horrendous listening to talk. I like little bits of talk, but some of this, the, the way it's presented here is just... Disgusting. Well, I've, I've always, tr it. I've always tried to put a, a measured yeah. slant well, on well, this, and I th just well, before well, you well, came well. on, you heard what I was saying about I people did. like yourself, and I've said that consistently. Yeah. Let, 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 let me just explain the non-binary thing then, okay? Um, honestly, I it was new to me. You know, I, I'm trans. I didn't even know about non-binary. I didn't even know about LGBT really because I wasn't. Um, like a gay man before I transitioned or anything like that. So this whole thing was new to me. And early on in this conversation, and this is what I would hope that everybody in the country would be like, early on, I had a view. And the view was that non-binary and being gender fluid and all that is just something that somebody chooses. But over the course of the last year, two years, I've actually gone out and I've met these people and it, and it is real. It's essentially this. I think that some people think, and you were talking about the, you know, this mythical idea that some bearded bloke is just going to click his fingers and identify and walk mm. into a, a changing room. Honestly, that's newspaper talk i mean I, to be honest I, I didn't i didn't mention about him walking no, to a, no, no, into I, a change room i, I, I was actually I, think i was all kind of quoting you from a couple of years ago when you talked about going to speak i think in trafalgar square and a guy walked on stage and said my name is um correct I, i'm a woman i have a penis and you thought i'm not having any of this and you legged it home because that wasn't and, and that and that's a true story uh, that is absolutely what happened i was booked as one of the keynote speakers that day and i thought i'm not having any of it but then you you come to realize and this is the point that I was going to make. Okay, it's called transition for a reason. There is a, there is a period where you go from one 
to the other. I get that. But you must recognise, you must recognise, uh, India, you, you're bright, you're a journalist, you're switched on. You must know that in addition to people like yourself, uh, and again, I'm repeating stuff here, for 20 years we never spoke about this on the radio, it was never controversial, even when Nadia won Big Brother, nobody even re really referenced that side of things. Ne if ever there was going to be a point of debate, it would have been that. That show was massive, but it wasn't, it didn't go into that territory. Suddenly, something happened. And I don't believe it happened because more people were suddenly comfortable transitioning. I believe it happened because many more people decided to declare an identity in because this kind of identity war. It's, it's not true. What, why, does, not... What, why does my friend say they've got 15 kids in their class, 15 girls in their year group who identify as non-binary? Why did When I take a call from a guy who was a student at university and two, a third of his year were calling themselves non-binary, this is not true, is it? It isn't true. There is such a thing is as it? some people jumping on this as Ian. a politics oh. thing. Do you really think 50% of a class are non-binary? It's cobblers, no, India, you know but, that. But, but, but this is rubbish. No, show me a classroom where 50% of pupils are non-binary. It's just newspaper talk. It's absolute slam. It's rubbish. No, I'm talking about people who've called into the show. I'm talking about people I know in teaching who said that the, the proportion of young girls... never doesn't seem to happen in boys' schools, but in young girls who adopt the non-binary and their preferred pronouns is absolutely massive. Well, but there's not 50% though, and I would say that the non-binary thing is purely because people are becoming more aware, and hopefully that's what we're all. Yeah, but about. none of us feel. Do, if you said to me, all, all do, aware? but do I? If you said, do I feel like 100% male? I could no, go. No, but that's not the same thing. Well, I don't know if I do or not. Well, well, honestly, Ian, we can't. I, I can't explain it all to you here, but that's not what it is. You're basically going down the route of which would eventually be that. Uh, like a tomboy is the same as being trans it's completely different from saying that you know you might feel a particular way at a particular time that is not what non-binary non is you're kind of in between the two but i, I want to get back to just the, the the general discourse um here i'm currently living under a death threat i don't know if you know this yeah i did from a, from a far-right organization i've had to change the way i live i've had to change the way i use social media it's actually impacting on my life and this is a direct result of the rhetoric that is pumped out by right-wing media and endorsed by the likes of Suella Braverman um, and uh, and people but people cancelling people like Joanna Cherry surely I mean it's, no, it's that that's where it's come yeah. from I'm afraid you've got the telescope round the wrong way on this one no no I, th I think you have I think you'll find that Joanna Cherry has been on the BBC three times in the last 24 hours. She's been on Sky. She's been in the Daily Express. She's been in the Daily Ma In no way is Joanna Cherry, a very prominent um, mm. politician, cancelled. She has well, a show, a show at Edinburgh's been cancelled because some of the staff didn't feel safe. But, and, and I mean, what's that, that about? That, Come on, you're a free is, speech advocate. Yeah. Well, I'm not a free... Not in, not in the term that you use, free speech, because free speech has become a euphemism... For I'm allowed to insult people and get away with it. And I'm not saying that about you. I'm talking about I know, the, general, I... the general conversation from... All right. I'm sorry, the no, right-wing side. I, but, I... but let me just say, as a, as a, as a closing point, the, the reason that the staff at the stand have said we don't want anything to do with it is because they're from the generation that recognises that, that this is... Okay. Bigotry. You wouldn't turn up at a Ku Klux Klan meeting. I wouldn't want to work behind the bar at a Ku Klux Klan. And, and I hope no. But and I ho honestly, I genuinely, sincerely, I think you know this. Another. Nobody should be trying to advance hatred or be unkind, but that's not the right way for anybody to deal with this. But I do think there are. Mo this is a multifaceted discussion. It's not a no pun here. It's not a binary discussion in that sense. Uh, we will speak to India again. I'm sure that's India Willoughby calling us in on this. It's a voice you are familiar with on this debate.